going into the spot ETF, we said that we would likely get a pullback about mid-January. And then after the spot ETF occurred and we were back over here, you know, at around 42K, one of the things we noted in this video over here where we talked about the early having year pattern is that what tends to happen is you get a dip early on in the having year. So take a look at 2024 and then compare it to 2020 um, and 2016 and 2012, right? So in all cases, in all prior cases for Bitcoin, sometime in Q1, there was a correction that took Bitcoin anywhere from between 15 to, you know, 30% below the yearly open, right? So the yearly open for Bitcoin this year is 42 point, or sorry, 42,279. So from 42,279, a 15% drop puts you at around 36K, okay? Now remember, there's no guarantee it's going to play out like prior cycles. I'm just simply pointing out historical drawdowns at this phase of the cycle, right? And again, in 2016, looks like the max drawdown was about 16%. In 2012, it looks like max drawdown was about 16, 17% as well. So far from the yearly open at this point, Bitcoin has dropped about eight and a half percent, eight to nine percent, right? So it has been a, a, you know, somewhat of a substantial drop. And, you know, it's easy to look at a drop like this and come to all sorts of conclusions. But I think it's also important to, you know, to try to stay as true to the chart as we can and say, well, look, at this point, this correction has not evolved into anything more than what we've already seen. It doesn't mean that it can't, but if you were to look at the pullback in February of 2023, going into March, it's about a 22% drop. And then this drop here, right, was about a 21% drop. This drop here was also about a 21% drop. And coincidentally enough, this drop so far has been about a 21% drop. So while it certainly has felt like a large pullback, right, I mean, 48, 49K all the way down to 39K, it is still, it's still within the realm realm of what we have seen over the last year. Um, so if it were to fall to the 20 week SMA or the bull marks were it would actually have to fall further than it has fallen during these other three prior corrections. The one way that both could be true where we go to the bull marks were band, but Bitcoin doesn't fall too much further would be if it just takes a while and you know, the 20 week SMA just sort of slowly curls up here. Right. And then, you know, Bitcoin price action just sort of fades into that. Something like that could happen. In fact, that has what has been happening for Bitcoin price action in a lot of these prior corrections is that it kind of slowly faded back to it. And like, here's an example where it was still above it and we got a pop back up and then it still faded back down a few weeks later and we had a long wick down. Same thing over here, right? It got close didn't make it to the bull mark square band, and then it popped back up only then a few weeks later, only to then drop back down again, right? So those sorts of patterns could, of course, repeat themselves. You know, you could go to the 20-week SMA, but it doesn't mean that you have to immediately drop to it. Um, if it were to play out like these prior patterns and looking at, say, like the short-term risk that we were talking about in the last video, it's a slow process down, right? Where the, where the extension from the 20 week SMA just sort of slowly goes back down to where we get back to that bull market support band, right? So, you know, we are getting relatively close. Um, again, just to reiterate, while I talk about the short term stuff, I do not think it makes sense to try to time the market in this way. Uh, I, you know, for me, as I've said before, I buy when the risk is low the risk metrics low, and then I, I take profits when the risk levels are high. Um, but I, I don't try to time each individual move based on, on this sort of outlook. One other thing that we can look at is that 50-day moving average. We covered that a little bit as well. So the 50-day SMA uh, for Bitcoin, 
we have fallen below it about 10 percent you can see that prior drops below the 50-day SMA were closer to it that one was about 14 percent this one was about 14 percent and then this one right here was about 14 percent so if it were if Bitcoin were to drop 14 percent below the 50-day SMA from where it you know sort of crossed down a 14 percent drop actually puts it at around 37k you know we've, we've mentioned a lot that sort of those high the high 30k range is going to be where you know if the bulls are going to hold the line that's where they're going to want to do it in this high 30k range um and so here we are right we're in the high 30k range we'll see if that happens the other thing of course to just to remain aware of is the the 100 week SMA, right or sorry yeah this is the the 100 week moving average so this is sort of like a a different scenario where if the bull market support band doesn't hold like 2019 right if it if it doesn't hold then the 100 week SMA is I think what you would look towards next so the 100 week SMA is currently around 28k which coincidentally is is sort of slowly starting to go back up to where the prior breakout zone was right so it's slowly starting to go back up so if it plays out like this and we get a drop below the bull mark support band sometime in the next couple of months, then I think you would be looking towards that that 100 week moving average um, as, as sort of the next level that, that could theoretically hold as support. There's other ways that we can look at the market as well. There's the, uh, the, fear, the fear and greed index. This has been putting in, um, you can see that it has been putting in higher lows and higher highs for a while. So the current fear and greed index reading is at 48. So this one might be a one to keep an eye on. The prior low was all the way down at 30, right? All the way down at, at 30. So a pretty big drop that we got back in September. So um, we'll see if this one can can do that same thing again. If it if it puts in a lower low, then that could be a sort of a sign that the trend is changing. But otherwise, I would look to see if it if it continues the pattern. So this is sort of just you know i just wanted to provide an update on on this early year having pattern where bitcoin does get this pullback and and it's actually sorry it's actually happened several times in fact and in fact in in both of the last two cycles when it had this pullback again this is just a fact right it's not a this is not a this is what ben thinks this is just a fact in both of the last two cycles when bitcoin had a pullback in q1 we tested both the bull mark support band and the 100 week moving average, right? So it happened right here. And then in the last cycle, it happened right here. But in both cases, one we held support, one we didn't. In both cases, both of those were eventually tagged. So we're getting kind of close, right? And I don't want to give you the impression that there's a guarantee that we even drop to the 20 week SMA. You know, the market can surprise and, you know, I mean, it's always possible that it, it, it gets a pop back up and, and then leaves everyone second guessing themselves for another two months. Um, so that's why I say I would just, I would come up with a strategy, stick to it, whether it's based on risk levels or something else, stick to it. And, um, go forward like that as far as altcoins go because I, I see people ask me about altcoins in the comments a lot as far as altcoins go they're always as always are going to de be dependent on bitcoin if bitcoin bounces then it will likely raise the altcoin market up if bitcoin drops then the altcoin market will get wrecked even harder so for instance to get back to the bull market support band for Bitcoin to get back to say the 21 week EMA, it's only about a 5% drop. Whereas for the altcoin market to get back to that level, the 21 week EMA, it's about a 7 to 8% drop, right? So you can see how the altcoin market is, is more volatile as, the, as these moves play out. And that's one of the reasons why we see the Bitcoin dominance just kind of slowly keep grinding up because as Bitcoin falls back in to the bull market support band, that's exactly what happens is alts fall a bit harder. If you think back 
to earlier in 2023, there was a period over here where Bitcoin was falling back into the bull market support band. And if you were to overlay Bitcoin dominance onto the chart, you can see that dominance was starting to go up before we got that bounce, right? Before that bounce occurred. And so whether we get a bounce or not, it seems likely that dominance would continue to go up as this move continues, right? And even in this move over here, there were some weeks where Bitcoin popped back up. I mean, like it, it got pretty close to the 20 week SMA and then it got a 5% a weekly candle, right? A 5% weekly candle from the current price would put Bitcoin back at, you know, 42K or so. So just trying to give people, you know, the perspective here on the market and to say, look, I mean, I, I, I know that it, it certainly seems like this has been a large pullback, but at this point, it's actually been a pretty standard pullback. And when you look at the year to date ROI of this year compared to 2016, it's actually pretty closely still following it, right? Now, again, if, if a black swan event were to occur, if, if the economy were to slow down, then yes, we could deviate from this stuff. That, that's exactly what happened in 2020, right? I mean, we, we deviated from it and we had a much larger drop. But I'm just trying to show you that every single cycle early on in the halving year, we've had a drop in Q1 that took us, you know, between 15 to 30% below the yearly open. This cycle that would correspond, you know, to hitting the high 30K range, which is where we've been, uh, even going a bit lower would still be within the realm of historical norms. This reaction is going to be a very important reaction, okay? Because if it bounces, which is what it, you know, you can see there's examples over here where it gets to the 20 week estimate and then bounces. If it bounces, then the dominance of Bitcoin should absolutely soar. And if that is the case, then I imagine Ether Bitcoin would, would likely take a hit. So again, probably going it's probably going to stay relatively boring for a little bit longer you know in terms of thinking about a mid january correction the the whole idea was that it would take at least a few weeks if not a couple of months um and and so far we're we're sort of in our third week of the correction some of these corrections over here took a lot longer right so it could still drag on for another you know three to four weeks easily and not be out of the realm of, of what we've historically seen. So, you know, I, I think that these markets are, are, are exhausting for everyone, draining for everyone. Um, there's certainly a lot of different views on, on how things are going to play out. But again, all I can stress is that it's important to have a plan and stick to it no matter what. And if we do get a larger drop than these three, right? If we get a larger drop, where either it goes to the to this level here or the 100 week or even lower, you need to have a plan in place so you know how to navigate that, right? You don't want to be the person that goes into it not having a plan and then you end up capitulating something only then regret it a few months later. So make sure you have a plan, stick to it. We've outlined likely outcomes. Hopefully it's useful to you guys. Thank you for tuning in. Make sure you subscribe, give the video a thumbs up and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.